actually, I thought that was fine because I'm from Wellington and that's all good, you know. They're all from summer and I'm from winter. Um, but it did get quite, it wasn't actually that pleasant. Also found I had the Nao reactive headlamp. I couldn't see a thing in the mist and stuff. <laughs> it was the reactive like shines on the, so I was kind of a little bit slow going there. Um, so I got to Chain of Lakes where I was planning on having a nap, uh, but it was raining and cold. Um, poo story now, it's Julian told one. Um, but the poo truck man had got lost, he couldn't be finding himself into this remote road, so they gave me a shovel and I had to dig a hole and all this sort of stuff in the rain. I was getting a bit cold and I just thought, oh, I'll just keep going. And initially I, we didn't kind of think about the fact that I hadn't recognised Tony initially when I went into that aid station. So, um, but we sort of thought that was a bit of a laugh, so I didn't kind of realise perhaps signs of sleep deprivation were creeping in and not really realising. Um, Anyway, I carried on uh, quite cold. I had enough clothes on, but we had to cross a river that was probably up to my hips, I suppose. Um, this is just after this. Um, to be honest, for me, it was nothing crossing this river, but there was a lot of talk about it afterwards. But it's just a rope and a river up to your hips, you know. Nothing you don't get in the Tauruas every five minutes. So there was three rivers to cross on this leg, but. Um, Going through a lot of blueberry bushes and stuff, which I ate quite a few of. Um, just the bushes were really cold on my legs and stuff, and I couldn't stop shivering. But I, I kept going, and I actually got to the next aid station in fairly good time, which is this one called Clickatat. Um, you can see it's a bit cloudy and misty still, but it was clearing up and it stopped raining. Um, this is where I sort of made my fatal error of the race. So this is, I think I was got about 1 p.m. So I hadn't slept for over 24 hours. Um, I can't remember this. I think it's about mile 175 or something. Um, so I was pretty tired. Um, I'm not sure why I keep going. I kind of wish people had said don't have a sleep. But I decided to keep going. I think uh, it was supposed to be the next section was the longest, brutalist section of all, they said. And um, I wanted to do a lot of it in the daylight. I thought that would be better. I knew I was four and a half hours in front of the next woman, but for some reason I didn't think that was enough, which was You're really stupid. Fourth overall. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, yeah, about fourth overall. I didn't really know that though. Yeah. But I was following the same three sets of footprints all the way, you know, and I could see them. They're like quite comforting to me, these three sets of footprints. These two guys and they had a, a pacer, a woman pacer with these littler feet. I was kind of following those. So I, I think there's a... Oh, that was coming into um, Clickatat, looking pretty knackered uh, before, before I left. You see, I didn't even change my clothes, and then as soon as I left it, I was too hot, and so I hadn't, I wasn't really prepared to leave it properly. Um, oh, that's the end. Hang on. I don't want to go to the end yet. There's some video somewhere, is that in here, do you know? Or, mm. oh, it wasn't a video. Mm. I can't look at the CD, no, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I had a dopey video of me like stopping and starting and looking a bit stupid, but that's all right. You can look at me now and just get the general idea. It's fine. Um, so when I left that aid station, I straight away knew that I shouldn't have left it. I just, my pack wasn't comfy. I had too many clothes on. And then, so I stopped and took them off. And then when I put my pack on, I wasn't comfy. And that made me really angry. I was quite grumpy and I was like, oh. Stopped and took the pack off again, got it, put it on again. Um, and then I, I sort of started, even that early I started to forget I was really in the race, to be honest. I was wandering along. And then I decided that I, I was thinking to myself, I remember thinking, oh, there's people following you, you gotta keep going, don't be a slack ass. You're gonna run all the downs and the flats and you're gonna walk fast up the ups and no mucking around. So I managed that for about two hours, quite well. <laughs> and then, um, I do um, remember just yeah, more and more forgetting um, that I was in the race because I just had, had no sleep and I think I was at about was it 52 hours or something with like an hour 20 sleep and um, I started, was hallucinating a lot just looking at things and I just remember 
the big misty oh, fir trees. Have you found this one? Is it here, the MP4. Oh, one. okay. Ooh, let's see if it. That was the guy waiting for me to leave and I start. I don't know where I am in there. Oh, there. I just start faffing around already. Not even hardly doing anything, just standing there really. <laughs> Yeah, it's got sound, but I think it just hasn't come through, eh? Break yourself a DVD. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I wouldn't worry about it too much. <laughs> anyway, that's just me faffing around, basically, and having no idea what's going on, really, that early on. <laughs> So I'm not sure when I completely lost track of all reality, but uh, if I'd known this beforehand that sleep deprivation isn't just hallucinations, that it can then go another level that's even worse, then I would have definitely slept, thought about it a bit more. Um, yeah, so I think as dark fell, um, I was doing pretty well up till there actually. I, don't, I got to the Twin Sisters Aid Station um, intersection I remember looking at the signs, I had no idea what they meant. Um, I just stood around there for a while. <laughs> um, it was getting dark too by then, I was getting, I was pretty, getting cold, although I had all my gear on, so it's, I was quite pleased that I thought of actually doing that. Um, a guy, a runner came upon me, I don't know, no idea of the time, how long I've been standing around, could have been five minutes, could have been like two hours. And he said, have you been to Twin Sisters? And I said, yes, I have, I had, and I didn't even know what he was talking about. And uh, he said, you need to go to sleep. So I lay down on the ground and he had a puffer jacket that he put on me. But then I said, I was too cold to sleep. And he said, well, the next aid station's up the track up that way. So that's when I wandered off up the track. Um, I just lay down under the trees and the bushes and things every now and then, got up again, still didn't know what's going on. Um, I just thought I was in a dream actually and I was trying to get back to my husband in a warm lounge desperately and I kept, I think the only way to get out of the cold and shivery dream was to lie down and go to sleep. So I just did that, lie down, get up, lie down, get up, wander around a bit more along the track. So it wasn't sort of theoretically lost because I had kept myself on the track but I didn't know where, what was going on really. Um, then I think I got the idea, I do vaguely remember this, that if I, I needed to commit more to get out of the dream and uh, come back to the real world. So I threw my nice you know, $200 black diamond carbon fibre poles away because I thought that would help if I really showed that I was, I really meant, you know, really meant <laughs> to get back into my nice warm lounge. And of course that didn't work. I remember looking down at myself, God, I'm still here. What, what the heck? I just had no idea really what was going on. And then I think eventually I must have slept long enough. And I think I wasted a few, I don't know, you might know better, a few hours basically. Certainly lost my lead, unfortunately, just swanning well, around. We're watching your circle go round and round. I still remember the dream, yeah, vividly the dreams and stuff. and. Uh, they had these big, you know, the woolly bear, the grasses, the fluffy things. They had big ones of those, like about this big. And I remember thinking I was on like an alien planet because they were so big here and everything was gigantic. Big gigantic trees and big flowers. And <laughs> anyway, eventually I, I had gone to sleep. I was pretty surprised I was actually turning my torch off when I slept and the battery didn't run out. Because I think if it ran out, I wouldn't even know what to do with it probably. But. <laughs> um, Funnily enough, I got woken up by Ray Sanchez again. <laughs> and he said, Gene, you've still, you can still win this. You haven't been to Twin Sisters Aid Station. You've got to check in. And when I woke up, I was like lucid again because I must have had enough sleep. There's a chemical in your brain that when you sleep enough, it comes back again. And you, it just gets depleted and then, it, you, I don't know, somehow you make some more. 
So I knew, I thought, shit. So I went, I was going back, I was on my way back to the aid station when a doctor and her husband came up to get me because they'd been sitting down at Twin Sisters, which was still kind of an hour away, downhill, I guess wondering what I was doing. Um, so I went down with them. She was a, a proctologist, funnily enough. I forgot my one good poo joke to tell her too. I never told her it, which I wish I had. Um, when I got to the bottom, they were really lovely. I had about an hour's sleep, I think. I, when I woke up, just in front of the fire, uh, I took my um, shoes off and dried my feet and stuff. Um, again, great. I had all the exact right stuff in my drop bags. So that was something. Um, they were pretty awesome there. Ate eight tons of hamburgers and slept in front of the fire. Um, you wouldn't believe how good the aid station people are. Just really, really incredible. Um, I woke up and I said, how long have I been here? And he said, you've been here an hour. And I said, well, I want to get going again now. And um, he had to check with the medical people, but I was lucid enough. But they decided since I had been on the way down, that was fine. So I, um, anyway, carried on. Uh, Annoyed, I was pretty annoyed. I was looked at my watch and thought, oh, bloody hell. I think it said 69 hours. I thought, oh, I should have been finished by now. I was pretty annoyed, actually. <laughs> um, got to, um, I think I'm missing some photos somewhere, but it might be wrong. I'll just go through the... This is me being hopeless, sorry, at using this one thing. Oh... I had a couple of photos of volcanoes and stuff, but maybe there. But similar to the one Julian had of the beautiful volcanoes in the um, cloud. Um, so we went up on the way up. I was going up Pompeii Peak, which is just beautiful. That's when I, I burst into tears up the top of there, cried, took a video. Oh! Um, but it was just low cloud, huge volcanoes just poking out, um, like Mount Rainier, and uh, it was just, it was so beautiful. Um, I got to the last aid station pretty pretty comfortably. Um, I said, how close? I don't know why I'm still racing these people. It was just stupid, but anyway. Um, I said, how far ahead are the women? And he said, oh, there's two women ahead. They're just chatting away. They've gone quite a lot there. He said, there's some time ago, but I mean, he couldn't tell me when. I thought, right, I'm not going to get changed into my other shoes I was going to put on. I'm not stopping here. I'm going to go right to the end. <laughs> So I ran, there was a gravel road, I ran as fast as I possibly could down this gravel road. I was kind of wheezing and I just, I smashed it down this gravel road, to be honest. It was pretty impressive, pretty impressive. Um, got to the bottom, ran as hard as I could up this gentle up and then I just sort of had to stop really. <laughs> but I was just, so I managed to get nearly to the end and I was running slowly and I think to be honest the two women I think it, they had finished before I'd even started my 13 mile sprint from the finish. Um, There's a finished video. Oh yeah that's cool, cool. I did start the sprint at the start of the track and then I said to my husband I think I started the sprint a little bit too early. So I slowed down around here and then I did my finishing sprint from that corner. Yeah lined myself up but yeah, again, sorry, I think it was because we had, I, maybe some of these are iPhone, um, yeah, it's not that's working, why, not really anyway. Working, but you remember it's what all right. for the, the volcano thing? Um, there's a video which had the volcano-y thing. There's some movies and uh, maybe I must have MP4 files of videos. Oh, it might be that one, maybe. Oh, you did a video, of mm. it's probably going to be slow anyway. Yeah. So just talk about the rest Sorry, of the I'm race. hopeless with PowerPointy things. No idea how to do them. That's that one again. Oh yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to hear me crying. <laughs> talk through, talk through the rest of you. But yeah, so the last bit was fine on the roads and stuff. I actually felt all right. Um, it's funny the end. I was you just feel a bit dead. You know, like wasn't any emotion at the end or anything. Damn good pizza, I have to tell you that. I got a third woman in the end, which I was pleased with after my um, faffing around. I was also pleased at no stage that I think of DNFing or anything, never even into my head. I was always getting to the finish, just for a want of like one hour's sleep really, that was all I probably needed to win I guess. But um, it was alright, I, right. I was pretty pleased to finish it and it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome experience. Um, 
some weird, just a few couple of weird things at the end. I thought I was surprised my legs weren't very sore at all. Quite surprisingly, they're a little swollen but not sore. Um, I had a lot of perpetuum, which is really good, but I think my husband wasn't washing the bottles because it got quite a bit rancid. <laughs> it was pretty smelly drinking that stuff. And I was like shivering and cold for quite all that afternoon after that finish. It, just couldn't, it was quite hard to get warm, and, which was interesting. But um, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. And I'd sort of recommend doing it. I mean, it's the old story. If you can run 5Ks, you can run 10. If you run 10, you can do a marathon. You can do a, you know, it's just a matter of uh, what you want to do, really. Um, I haven't decided. I don't know. I might do. Got my eye on some other things. <laughs> I don't know. You know, when you're getting old, you just yeah, you, you're sort of I'm nearly 53. You just I, so to do that again, if I could maybe do something else. It's like the Moab 200, the Tahoe 200, Tour de Jeans. I oh, know there's a few around. There's a few around, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. What else is there? She's the Candice, the, 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 the she looks, she seems nice. Yeah, she's gorgeous, gorgeous old Candice. <laughs> no, she's really lovely, yeah. And uh, if you get a female race director, you get, you get a pretty belt, instead of one of those ugly man's belts. So that was quite good, you got to choose your, your belt buckle. These, um, the flowers are from the course, they kind of put all the bits from the course and laminate them, so I thought that was really nice. Nice touch. That's what I was after. But um, yeah, I recommend it if that was too long for you. Fat Dog is really good too in Canada. That's like a week before that. It's 122 miles, same kind of scenery. <laughs> really good, really good. I mean, uh, modest. And there's another, another one. I like oh, there's more. God. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that one? Yeah. Oh, Margarita must be done. Well, that was me and uh, just looking really stuffed <laughs> in the camper van. <laughs> I think that was that afternoon. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, yeah, we're just joking. I'd ride to, uh, when we got back. We were only there, like, unfortunately, we arrived like the day before it, and we had to go straight back after the prize giving because we didn't have enough annual leave, the usual story. We got a ride in one of those little things for the decrepit at, at LA. That's one of the, uh, <laughs> that's one of the, uh, signs. Oh, was it? Oh, the Bigfoot thing wasn't in there. Oh, that's yeah, the you should. That's the rock. And he, on the, on the course, there was oh. a, no, you rock. Oh, He's okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Do it. Cool. Done. Yeah, they had a tequila station too, but I, oh. <laughs> I couldn't have that. I felt like a bit of a wuss not having the tequila, but anyway. <laughs> So where did you come and, um, overall and in the women? Um, I got a feeling I might have come 11th overall, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And, and third in the women's. But you were leading when you had to... Yeah, I was leading pretty much most of the race, actually. Quite easily, really, to be honest. But, but, but it doesn't sound... But there's not a lot, I suppose, fast people don't generally enter these things. So they're kind of new. If it's not on the, you know, the ultra tour or whatever, people don't enter them as well. So I tend to go for ones that people don't so enter so much. But they're now Hard Rock Qualifier and UTMB points from now. So as soon as they do that, then they just get more popular. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. If, if you don't have the hours sleep, how much sleep would you have in total? Oh, about, I think about two hours 20. You don't need much. You, I reckon. An, I reckon an hour a night would be sufficient. And yeah, there's what the sort of winners. How long they slept? Well, I don't think. Yeah, they wouldn't have had much more than that. I think the winner had less, maybe a couple of hours. But if you could, yeah. If, 